Hello, I'm Pete Smith from the University of Aberdeen and today I'm going to be saying a few words about the role of diets and land in tackling climate change. Just under a quarter of greenhouse gas emissions in Scotland were from agriculture and related land use sector. Agriculture itself was responsible for about 18% of our greenhouse gas emissions. Globally, food is responsible for 26% of greenhouse gas emissions on the planet. Of this, 58% arise from animal products. And of these, half come from beef and lamb. That's because cattle and sheep are ruminants and their digestive system produces methane as the food is broken down. The UK Committee on Climate Change says that we need to cut meat and dairy consumption by at least 20% by 2050 and reduce food waste by 20%. Meat, and especially ruminant meats, have a 10 to 100 times greater carbon footprint than plant-based foods. So shifting diets towards consumption to more plant-based foods will benefit the climate. Vegan diets have the lowest climate impact, then vegetarian diets, but all reductions in meat and dairy deliver climate benefits. The target total emissions for an individual to meet net zero targets is two tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalents per year. That's the fair share of emissions globally. A heavy meat diet alone would exceed the worldwide per person emissions target to combat climate change with no other emissions. That's no travel, no house eating, that's just the diet. The difference between a vegan and a meat heavy diet is 1.32 tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalents per year and that's equivalent to two return flights from Edinburgh to Malaga. Eating less meat and dairy is not just better for the climate Ruminant meat has impacts about a hundred times the impact on climate change, land use, energy, water use, air quality and water quality than plant-based foods. So there are many other benefits to eating more plant-based foods and it's healthier too. Land can be used for many things, growing plants for food, wood and energy, but also for tourism and biodiversity. Over 30% of the crops grown on the planet are fed to livestock rather than humans. So eating less meat and dairy would free up land to tackle climate change. When plants grow, they remove carbon dioxide, which is the most important greenhouse gas from the atmosphere. The land can therefore be used to remove carbon dioxide and to tackle climate change. Nature-based solutions like protecting peatlands and woodlands, restoring degraded peatlands, woodlands and coastal and marine systems, better managing woodlands and soils, and creating new native woodlands can help biodiversity and help to address climate change. Nature-based solutions are also good for climate change adaptation. Adaptation is important for making the land and agriculture more resilient to future climate change. There are many nature-based solutions available in the UK. Nature-based solutions fall into the categories protect, restore, manage and create. Examples include protecting peatlands, woodlands and permanent grasslands, restoring degraded peatlands, forests and coastal marine systems, that's blue carbon, and that also includes rewilding of areas, better managing woodlands and soils, for example by adding back more nutrients, keeping the soil covered and disturbing the soil less, and creating new woodlands with native trees. Scotland has a big role to play, for example 64% of the UK's peatland protection potential is in Scotland. But we have to be careful not to rely on nature-based solutions to meet our climate change targets. The land can't do it all. We can't plant enough trees or restore enough peatland to mop up all of our emissions. So immediate and aggressive action is needed across all sectors of the economy. Not all land-based solutions are good for biodiversity, so we should prioritise those that are. If implemented carefully, nature-based solutions are good for biodiversity, good for people and good for both climate change adaptation and mitigation. Changing our diets, reducing food waste and managing our beautiful landscapes better could really help us to tackle climate change.